Hey guys, welcome back to Through the Screen. I'm Erica. I'm Charlotte. I'm Emily. We hope you guys have been enjoying our episodes so far, liking, commenting, and sharing with your friends. And if you missed any of them, head on over to our channel and watch. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe while you're there. This week, we're discussing a very important social issue, so we hope you follow us once again as we join together via Skype to bring you conversations through the screen. episode we will be discussing fame, materialism, and status, and what we think the measure of fame should be. We will also be bringing you an important update about SeaWorld, sharing a heartwarming story about a penguin that returns every year to a man who rescued him, and reviewing a few easy do-it-yourself household cleaners, finally discussing the season 22nd premiere of Dancing with the Stars. First up, fame. So this week for our topic, we decided to go with more of a social issue. Um, so recently, Charlotte sent us a, an article that the Spirit Science put together. Um, and it's basically talking about fame, wealth, materialism, and that it's not really all that it's cracked up to be. And even celebrities are really critical of it. Um, and in that article, there is a video that kind of really nicely illustrates it and just kind of shows various celebrities, like anybody that you can think of basically, talking about how isolating and lonely and, you know, just unfulfilling and depressing fame can be. So we thought it would be kind of an interesting discussion since it is a really big part of our society today. And on the point of society, um, at the end of the video, they make a point that um, we always blame society, but we are society. So I think that's a really interesting point, you know, just saying that we can't just be like, oh, well, it's just society. It's society's fault because that's us. So, you know, we have to be the ones to kind of change that. And the big question is, how are we going to do it? So um, we just wanted to talk about, you know, our thoughts on fame and materialism and what the measure of success should actually be. So what do you guys think? Um, well, for me, you know, one of the things that really sticks out is, you know, a lot of these celebrities, they said, you know, when I get here, I'll be happier. When I get here, I'll be happier. Here, I'll be happy. And one of my favorite quotes from one of my all-time favorite TV shows is, happiness is not, it's not a destination. It's, it's a mood. It comes and goes. It doesn't last. It, stay, it you know, it, it, it's meant to come and it's meant to go and you're meant to feel other things. Otherwise you'd always be happy and we'd be robots. So, I mean, you know, it, it it doesn't make it, you know, a lot of people just always, you know, or they measure success simply by how many houses they have or how many cars they drive or, you know, Instagram how much money they have in the bank or what kind of job that they have, you know? And it's not always the case, you know, to truly be, you know, successful, you know, what exactly do, you know, what is it, you know, how do we measure somebody's success and somebody's fame or, you know, somebody's, you know, anything, how do we, how do we do that? So that's, you know, really what, you know, this video kind of opens up that whole wide discussion of it. Yeah. So we often always think that like celebrities are always happy and, um, always at high spirits because they have like this massive house or they have like, beautiful cars or amazing families or a bank full of loaded cash or whatever. But in reality, I mean, like, like there are broken families out there. People do struggle. Um, and as Charlotte said, like happiness does come and go. And what hit me the most is like, um, when the guy was like, um, I went to this party because I was really excited to go to this party and he just felt so alone. And that's reality. Like, it's going to happen. You're going to feel alone. It's feelings of life. Like, 
Um, so that really hit me. We're all human. Um, but it was really, the video really, um, I don't want to say inspired, but like, I don't even want to say motivated, but like really taught me or like, I guess, I don't know, educated me on this because I, I was actually blinded by this before I saw this because I actually thought that everything was okie dokie, you know, yeah. but it's not always like that. Um, and to see some celebrities that I really actually look up to and, uh, what their thoughts are and their heart behind it. And I was like, Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think Robin Williams is a really big example of this too, is that a mm -hmm. lot of people didn't really realize that he was struggling and that he felt completely alone, you know, in his own life. So I think that's definitely one big example of this. Um, I think one interesting point was, I think Tupac actually brought this up in an interview. I was say that. I was gonna yeah. The point is like the biggest point in the whole video for me. Yeah, he's, one of the things that he said was that it's ridiculous that some people have billions of dollars while there are people that are starving. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's just, that it is, it's really ridiculous. You know, you think of people like the Kardashians who, I mean, we're not, obviously we're not bashing anybody, but you think of somebody like the Kardashians who are famous for, you know, what, and, you know, have all of this fame and, and social media fame and all of these things. And, you know, you have people that can't even make a living and can't even provide for their families. And it's just, it's, it's crazy, you know what we reward in our lives and in our society and you know that fame and success is measured by Instagram followers or material wealth and I think it's just it's ridiculous and you know I kind of started thinking that you know one of the things that really made me sad was one of the one of the people that we look up to a lot is Shannon Doherty and you know she's had a really bad rap in Hollywood and you know for things that happened two decades ago and you know she does all of these amazing things for causes and for the world and for animals. And, you know, I feel like people like that, like Shannon and Holly and like Sam Simon, Leilani Munter, people that do things for the world and contribute to the world. I feel like that's something that, you know, should measure success and not, you know, material wealth or all of these things. I feel like it should be what you put into the world and what you contribute to the world. So, I mean, that kind of that question of how do we measure success, it's a very open question, but I feel like that is kind of my take on it, that it should be measured by, you know, more substantial things. And again, it comes back to, you know, if you put good karma out in the world, you'll get good karma. So it's, yeah. you know, again, essentially, you know, what you give the world is what you get back. So if you walk around the world thinking you're entitled and, you know, everything's going to be handed to you on a silver platter, chances are you're going to get kicked in your ass pretty fast. Um, That's a really good point. You know, it's it's just reality. It really is. It's reality of the situation. And, again, like the, the, the video states, you know, we blame society. But, again, we blame ourselves because we are society. So right. we need to find a better way to educate the next generation so that this stops the cycle and we break a change and maybe we create something that you know, changes the world for the better because there's so much wrong with this world right now. I mean, just look at this week, for example. Right. There's just a lot that is wrong with this world and people who feel entitled and think that they, you know, deserve this and deserve that. And that's that's not saying any type of religion, person, you know, creed. That's every single human being on this planet. Right. So, I mean... Every single person has gone through some type of moment in their life where they feel like they're entitled or, you know, they're the better person in the argument or they're the better person in the situation or, you know, they judged, you know, somebody, you know, quicker than they realized or, you know, something like that. So it's just it all comes down to how do we look at the bigger picture and how do we change that and how do we bring about asking better questions instead of always judging questions, you know. You notice in the society we judge more than anything else, and that's something that needs to seriously change. Right. I think one of the speakers made a really good point is that we've kind of come into this world of competition, like, you know, who's better than who, kind of what you were saying. 
um, and that we need to really birth like a new culture and a new way of looking at things because you know this is a world where bullying is like higher than it has ever been you know so we need to find some way to end this and kind of change the way we look at our society um, and I think that's a really big thing that's mentioned um, in the video. So, you know, we're definitely going to link that down below. It's really good and really inspiring. So we definitely encourage you guys to watch it and let us know your thoughts on it and how you think success should be measured. Recently, SeaWorld has announced that they plan to stop breeding orcas in captivity which only infuriated us because, as we all know, in light of, of it's all because of Tilly and his impending demise. Due to the fact that it is no longer legal for SeaWorld to take orcas from their natural habitat, they are now forced to close their um, orca breeding program. A SeaWorld CEO has stated, as one of the largest rescue organizations in the world, we will increase our focus on rescue operations so that the thousands of stranded marine mammals like dolphins and sea lions that cannot be released back into the wild will have a place to go. How do we feel about this? <laughs> exactly. I was so mad when I read that because first of all you are not a rescue organization. As much as you want to think that you're a rescue organization, you are not a rescue organization because the level of evils that SeaWorld has done do not out they far outweigh the good. And so you, you can't just say like, oh, we, I mean, we rescue animals, so we're just a good rescue organ. Like, I don't know. I was so, I was so mad when I read that. But I mean, I never trust any of SeaWorld's motives. So to me, this announcement that they, that they gave, I was just kind of like, okay, because, you know, it could be one of many things. It could be that they are losing their biggest breeding machine, Tilikum, because he has fathered over 20 whales at SeaWorld. And, you know, if they figure that they're going to lose him, that they won't really have a way to continue this breeding like they have been. So that could be one thing. The other thing is that they could finally be, you know, like, giving... Tilikum what he always needed, but it's far too late now, you know, to be like, oh, we messed up. Well, yeah, of course you did, you know. Um, it could be also to get their ticket prices up, to get their stock up. I actually read somewhere that their stock increased by like 4% the day that they made this announcement. So to me, I think that was probably why they made it in the first place. I don't trust anything that SeaWorld does. I don't think it's out of the goodness of their heart. I think there's definitely motives behind that. And, you know, we're still here wondering what about the whales that are still in captivity? You know, it's too late for them. Are they just going to rot their the rest of their lives? So, you know, obviously they can't be released back to the wild because, you know, they don't really know how to survive on their own. So the biggest option would be a sea pen, which is where they're still in the ocean, but they're also still being cared for and they're not forced to perform tricks. So that's what people are asking and we don't we don't know whether SeaWorld is going to do that or not, but This week's heartwarming story is about a Megalanic penguin named Dindin. About four years ago, a retired bricklayer was walking along the beach when he saw a penguin covered in oil and struggling to live. The man named the penguin Din Din and tried to release him back into the wild, but Din Din kept coming back and coming back and coming back. A local fisherman said that he has seen nothing like this before. The penguin spends about a week and leaves for the water to return to the home of the man. Din Din the penguin spends about eight months in Brazil with his favorite human being and is extremely loyal to his human. So we hope you enjoy this, heart, this week's heartwarming story, and if you would like to read and watch the video linked to the story, we will for sure link that down below. So last week for our product of the week, we, we chose a DIY eyeshadow primer. And obviously none of us were fans, but this week we wanted to leave beauty products and instead test something that guys watching the show can also try if they want. 
Um, so this week we decided to give suggestions of a few easy and cruelty-free DIY household cleaners using simple ingredients that you can find at home. And one of them we tried for ourselves to let you know what we thought. So one really easy household cleaner you can make yourself is an all-purpose cleaner and for that you need only need salt and vinegar. Uh, this can be used to clean kitchen and bathroom surfaces. Another quick and easy one is a glass cleaner using only vinegar and water. And you can put these two ingredients on a washcloth or in a spray bottle uh, for a streak-free shine. You can also use two very simple ingredients as household cleaners. Um, one of them is salt, and you can use salt to remove grease spots simply by pouring the salt on any tough stains and let it absorb. Um, you can also use salt as a simple oven cleaner. Um, just use the salt when the oven is still warm, and once it's cool, wash it out. The other simple ingredient is baking soda, which also can be used to absorb odors and clean toilet bowls and drains along with vinegar. So finally, the household cleaner that we personally wanted to try was a wood finish. And this just uses lemon juice and vegetable oil. And this can be used to remove scratches from wood or make it shine. Um, and you just simply rub it out with a soft, a soft cloth. Um, so what did you guys think about this DIY cleaner? Um, I really liked it because I actually moved last week. So our apartment actually needed to be fully cleaned and stuff. And um, our apartment is mostly wood floors. So I thought it was perfect to try. Um, so I actually used um, like the vegetable oil. I put water in it and... Um, Instead of lemon juice, I used um, just the essential lemon um, oil instead. Um, and I made a lot because um, I had a whole apartment to clean with it. But um, I really liked it. It actually did its job really well done. And I, like, I wasn't coughing up a storm because it was overwhelming with the smell of chemicals. It was pretty good. I probably wouldn't put as much vegetable oil in as I normally would because, or as I did, because I, I did slip and fall. Um, but other than that, it was really good. So that's my. Um, yeah, I use my own Avira. And I, would, I mean, it's not something I would use every day, but it is something that definitely works and it does what it says it's going to do. Um, but again, there's I probably wouldn't do it every day just because, I don't know, I just, I like, you know, just basic cleaners, I guess. I don't, I don't really know how to, like, word it. It's just, I feel like it's just an easier, there's an easier way to do it. And, I like Erica said, I enjoyed that it wasn't so, like, overpowering by, like, a smell or anything. But, I don't know, that's just my <laughs> Um, so I actually did a little bit of improvising because I didn't have either one. So I actually used juice from an orange. I figured since they're both citrus fruits that it might work similarly and also smell good. Um, and instead of vegetable oil, I used olive oil. And I don't, I don't think that's too big of a stretch. Um, so I mean, as far as removing scratches, I wouldn't say that because I feel like it's hard to fill scratches. But it did make the wood a lot shinier. And this may not be the easiest thing to do, but, you know, if you have company coming over and you just want to throw something together and don't have, like, a wood finish, I feel like this would work. I know a lot of people would kind of just prefer to use a cleaner. Um, but we do want to remind you, if you do, just make sure you look at brands to see that it's not being tested on animals. Um, but we will link the article below if you want to try any of these things that we suggested. And be sure to let us know what you think. This week, we saw the return of the 22nd season of Dancing with the Stars. With the whole new batch of contestants and many fan fave pros not returning, we saw a lot of fresh and some familiar faces return to the ballroom. So, what did we think of this episode and the debut of the new cast? Um, so, for me, a lot of my favorites were also some of the judges' favorites. Um, so, one of my favorites of the night was um, Wayna Morris, who is in Boys to Men, 
who danced with Lindsay. I thought that was really, really good. He had really good energy and was just like a really like firecracker personality. So I really liked that. Um, I was incredibly impressed with Niall, who is actually deaf. Um, and he danced with PETA. And I just think it was amazing, you know, how he could go along with that without being able to hear. He said that he just kind of watched her and kind of went along with her. So I, I really liked that, and I'm really rooting for him to go far. Um, I was a little disappointed with Jody because um, I had really high hopes for her, but I did notice her facial expressions, like the judges pointed out. She did look very, very focused, so hopefully she can improve on that, and I think she has really good potential, though. Um, another one that was really disappointing was Misha Barton. Um, I was like, no, because I really wanted her to be good, but she was probably one of my least favorites. Um, but some of the other ones that I really liked were um, Ginger and Val. I think they did really good, and they were also one of the favorites of the night. Um, I think Vaughn Miller and Whitney did pretty good. Um, I love the, that they danced to Florida's song, um, My House. I really love that song, and they, they have a huge height difference, but... Whitney is my favorite, so I hope that they can go far. Um, for me, I mean, basically my favorite was probably Ginger and Val, um, just because I love Ginger anyway, and I was so happy when I found out she was going to be on this season, and then um, I was just so excited for her, because I know she just had a baby, and like, you know, she does Good Morning America every day, so I knew it was going to be a challenge for her, and I'm so excited that, like, she's, you know, giving it her all and is going all in for it, so I look forward to seeing that the rest of the season. Um, I was a little disappointed with Jody, but, again, I think that's just because I had such high hopes, like Emily said, like, we just set kind of, like, really high standards for her, so maybe that was kind of our own fault in doing that because it is only week one, so yeah. who knows. But um, Again, uh, how Emily said that she was disappoint disappointed in Misha, like, uh, I agree because I see what you mean by that, but I did notice that she had, like, exquisite lines. So I really think that that can help her in the long run and, and definitely can go from somewhere to improve there. So I'm excited to see that. Um, and again, really, I was impressed with Niall and Peta. You, you could not not be impressed by him, yeah. um, to just go through that the way he was going through it without really being able to hear the beat or anything like that, but still getting the steps right and just following along with Peta and trusting Peta. That was really awesome. Um, I really liked Doug Flutie's segment because again, it was a tribute to Boston. So how could I not, you know, like that, but. <laughs> He does need to, some improvement in the dancing, but football players usually tend to go far in Dancing with the Stars, so I'm excited for that, and hopefully um, he can, you know, get some whooped into shape by Karina. But um, who I, uh, I think is going home, I'm not quite sure, because there's quite a few people that it could go to. Um, this is kind of like the part of the season where anybody's game. So, it'll be interesting to see. Um, so, I don't watch Dancing with the Stars, and I've never seen a episode. Um, but Emily did send me the links to the dances, so I watched the dances. Um, but I can't give my opinion on who's going home, and I just don't know the backstories of the dancers. But my favorite ones were Doug and Karina. Um, Wayna and Lindsay and Niall and Peta. Um, but all of them were like amazing. I, I like when I saw Mer, Mer, um, the girl from the OC, I can't pronounce her name. <laughs> Misha Martin. Misha, there we go. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, oh, that's Marissa. And I was <laughs> so excited. But then I was very disappointed. I thought, I was like, oh man. And then, um, there was a dance to Demi Lovato's song Confident and I just, I didn't even like the dance to that, and I was like disappointed again. But I think that was I think that was Jody's dance. Yeah, so those three were my favorite, but they were all really well done. Um, I think I should give the show a chance though, because <laughs> I'm like a dancer myself, and I love dance. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I personally think maybe like as Charlotte said, it's basically anybody's game at this point. But I'm thinking possibly you know Geraldo or or Doug. 
could be in the bottom. Um, partially because they got lower scores, but also because, you know, it, it's... I mean, a lot of them have never danced before, but there wasn't a lot of movement in either of their dances, so they could be possibly be in jeopardy. So tune in to our episode next week and find out um, if we were right in any of our choices and who might be going home, who might be staying, and we'll also see, you know, who really has what it takes because now they don't have all that time to back up their their performance rehearsals. So it's going to go a lot faster. We'll definitely, you know, see who cracks under the pressure next week and um, can't wait to see, you know, who steps out and, you know, really shines. So stay tuned. This week's song is called Open Her by Morgan Page featuring Lissy. And it was actually released last year on February 24, 2015. Um, I personally was shocked with this song because normally when I listen to the songs that either Charlotte or Emily pick, it's songs I'm hearing for the first time or ones that I just don't like. Um, but I love Open Heart. It is such an upbeat, dancey song that I often just sing in the shower because I love it so much. Um, and to be honest, the first time I heard it, um, I was at church um so anyways what did you guys think of this sweet song of the week so open heart was one of the songs i found um actually by shazamming it while i was watching pretty little liars and um it's one of those songs that i instantly fell in love with because it takes me back to like a certain time and um place like because I, I used to love that type of music dance and techno music and it's kind of like upbeat and dancey and techno so I really, really just fell in love with it the second I heard it. Plus, I love the message that it sends out, so that was also an added bonus to the song. So I really, really enjoy it. Um, I really love it, too. Um, I think it's interesting because we don't usually do, like, really upbeat, dancey songs um, as our song of the week, but this one, I think, as Charlotte said, has, like, a really good message as well. Um, so I really like it, and actually the beginning of it I think is very, very similar to the remix version of Summertime Sadness by Lana Del Rey. Yeah. Um, it's very, very similar, and I think her voice is kind of a mix between Lana Del Rey and Miley Cyrus, which is like a really interesting mixture, but I like it a lot. Um, and I just, I love the song, I want to always dance to it, and um, as soon as I heard it, I knew I had heard it somewhere, and it turns out it was from Pretty Little Liars, so um, I really like this one, and I think pe everyone should definitely listen to it. So we hope you guys enjoyed this week's pick, and if you'd like to listen or buy the song, we will link below the official lyric video, as well as the iTunes link where you can purchase it for yourself. And of course, let us know what you think down below. Okay guys, that's our show. We hope you've enjoyed this installment of Through the Screen. If you did, be sure to like down below and also subscribe to the channel. We also appreciate any feedback that you may have. We post new videos every week and we'd love for you all to join us and tell your friends. Next week we will be discussing a brand new topic so you won't want to miss it. Until then, thanks for watching, stay informed, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!